owning a car in the Philippines, uh, sorry, in Spain, um, the main costs you've got is cars are overpriced here. They, they are without a doubt overpriced. And I would say it is worth having a look at a UK car or somewhere else in Europe and see how easy it is to transfer it over. Um, because a lot of cars are only about eight, nine hundred euros to transfer the plates. And I know some of them can get it done cheaper. There's a guy I know who transfers them for about 400. Um, but the problem you get is even on a second hand car, you get taxed on it. Now, I can understand why so many Spaniards have old cars and they just keep them. You know, at the end of the day, as long as it goes from A to B, the climate's good for the engine. Uh, what is bad is the mechanics. The mechanics are atrocious. There's a lot of bad mechanics. Finding a good mechanic is time consuming, but at the same time, um, like the car I've got at the moment, I mean, it's a two year old Astra. It shouldn't be having any engine problems whatsoever, but its mechanics have damaged it. That's it, end off. The car was fine, it's the mechanics. Um, and this is the problem. I mean, I did tell them which garage to use because I do have a good British mechanic. That, okay, he's about 20 minutes away. But you know what? Now the car's having to go into Vauxhall directly. Dealership price. And it'd be nice to see the full report out of that because I'm sure they're going to pick up more stuff thanks to bad mechanics. Um, so I would say what, how much to invest in a car. If you're going to come here long term, I'd drive a car over and trade the plates over. And lots of people say, well, what about driving on the wrong side? Personally, I don't care. Uh, but in the UK, you can find cars that are already on the wrong side anyway. So you can actually get it on the right side for Spain. Um, so you just shop around. I mean, to be honest, if we had a garage, I'd probably have a little Porsche Boxster or something. Um, but the, the reality is we're on on-road parking. You get dented, people don't know how to reverse, they'll push your car backwards um, just so they can have more space to pull out. They are terrible at parking. And I'm not going to get thumbs down for saying it, but you know what? That's reality. There's, the amount of dents in cars here is atrocious. Um, they'll just drive off, they'll dent your car and just drive off. So, yeah, that's, that's an important bit. What is good is the cost of insurance is cheap. Um, I find the, the new Vauxhall, I think it's 180 euros a year. Same car in the UK is probably going to be about 400, 400 pounds. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot cheaper. And that's got uh, recovery with it as well, because you've got to have vehicle recovery in Spain uh, by law. And the insurance companies will already add that to it anyway, because you've got to have it. Um, car tax is only. On the van, it was only about 40, yes, it's cheap. It's only about 40 euros, if that. Might even be 29 or something, it's crazy. The car will be cheaper. I uh, haven't had to do it yet, because it's still a new car. MOTs, they, they're based on this, the type of vehicle. So the, the van was, I think, about 50 euros for an MOT, and it had to have it every six months because of its age. But unlike the new car, don't have to do it. I think the new, his first ITV will be coming up very soon. I'm not sure. I need to check that one because I'm supposed to. I'm still waiting on documents for the car. Um, but even then, I mean, like that, it's probably once a year being a car, which is the same as the UK. And I don't don't find them as strict here in Spain. I do I do find they're a complete drive through. You know, compared to the UK, it's a bit like my friend Don with his when he had a. I said Volkswagen Golf, he had this provisional um, written on there that something needed to be changed. It was actually a design of the car. It's not something that was wrong with the car. It was actually part of the design. But in the MOT, it's that strict in the UK that it went down as a fault when it's actually part of the design of the vehicle. But here in Spain, I think if you got through the emissions, the rest of it would be plain sailing. Um, so, yeah. Expense-wise, cars are cheaper here than the UK. Insurance is cheaper, MOTs are cheaper. The failures on vehicles is a lot less. The, you're not as strict. Um, but the downside is bad mechanics will rob you blind. Bad mechanics will damage your car. Bad mechanics will put faults in your car to bring it back next week for another repair. Um, if you can get around the mechanics, then yeah, it's cheap. They're also removing some of the toll roads as well, because there is toll roads in Spain. 
Um, personally, if you stick it on Google Maps, it will avoid 90% of them anyway. But they are removing some of the toll roads. Um, I was in a local newspaper recently about that. But I do find you need a car to get around here. Um, pure, where we are on the coast, because everything's so spread out, like it went, like yesterday, we went off to Casada Fish and Chip Shop, but it also went to a farm. Um, that's probably around 20, 25 kilometer round trip. Um, you can't do it on the bus. There is no bus. So, I mean, there's bus services for like Toliveca to Cartagena, to um, Alicante, etc. But it ain't going to go off to the left, down by the bus, uh, down where the farm is, and then go over to Casada. You know, that ain't going to happen. You, you need public, uh, private transport to do that. But if you wanted to go to the airport stuff, not a problem. If you want to go to the big cities, not a problem. There's buses for all of that stuff. It's, it's very cheap. Is it very cheap? No, it's very accessible. I wouldn't say it's very cheap. The bus to Madrid, yeah, Madrid cost me more on going there on the bus and back than it did in fuel to take five people. You know, what I'm saying is myself on the bus traveling alone, going there and back, cost more than it did for a full car going, going to uh, Madrid. Um, so, yeah, the buses can be a little bit expensive in that way, but then again, you're sat there minding your own business. But I mean, I'm not a fan of public transport, never have been. Um, I mean, it's, I've always found them unreliable or late. I mean, I find the bus, buses for bus terminals and stuff very efficient, but I do find, like, uh, like for example, when I was at Birmingham University, the train was late pretty much every single day or it was cancelled, or there was some other reason. There was always a problem. Um, so you, your day finished at, say, half past four, but you only get home at eight o'clock, and it's only a, it's only a one-hour trip between the university and the house, because all that other time gets lost on the, the platform when the trains are late and out of sequence and all this sort of stuff. And you're thinking, this happens every day. It's not once and once or twice, but then when you get on there, it's a sweat box. It's like going in with cattle because there's been a train missing. You got three times as many people on the train than would there be normally. You think, yeah, but that's only one train missing. No, because you've got people trying to squeeze onto that train that were delayed waiting for the first train. Then you got the people in the middle that because the second train's out of sequence is now late. So you've got those, which is where I am. And then you've got the third ones, which are arriving for the next train, which is now going to be behind that one, but maybe delayed because this one's out of sequence. So you've got three times as many people trying to fit onto one train. Yeah, that's why I don't like public transport. Anyway, thanks for watching.